um, I used to be a cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if there's one thing that I learned about being a cheerleader, it's that being a cheerleader is like being like a really cool, glorified, retarded person. And that's it. All we do is yell out random phrases like, we're number one! Defense! Score some points! Like, that's it. We just regurgitate phrases at a giant mass of people that aren't even there to see us. They're there to watch the people who are actually performing a game. If it wasn't for the football players, we wouldn't even be there. And I feel bad for my dad, though, because, like, he had to go to all the games because my mom would drag him to him. Like, my son's a cheerleader. I live vicariously through my son. Yes! But, like, he, would, he was kind of like the loser dad because all the people would be like, yeah, that's my kid, number seven. QB, getting a full ride to Stanford. My dad like, oh yeah, uh, quarterback. Um, my son just did the toe touch. <laughs> and is now yelling at us through a giant cone. <laughs> We're number one! Yeah, we are, Steve, yeah. <laughs> yeah <we are. laughs> All right. Um, ladies, I don't think you guys really know how good you have it. Because in the animal kingdom, Rape laws don't exist. <laughs> Rape exists? But that's about it. You don't really hear about a guy frog seeing a girl frog that he fancies trying to hop up to her, start off that awkward conversation, just hoping to get lucky for that first date. He gets it, he's all nervous, making himself real sticky and gooey, licking his eyeballs, <laughs> trying to get him shiny as shit like marbles. The date finally comes up, they got a nice, you know, Firefly lit, lily pad ride down the river with a full buffet of flies going crazy. He's sitting there with her going on. Yeah, I have like seven tadpoles and each one is just super special in the rest. And I have this thing on my toe, it's an orange and yellow spot, but it's only supposed to be yellow. He's like, yeah, 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 okay. And he has to sit there through like emotional stuff, like uh, hearing about how her dad croaked a year ago. Yeah! I said it! Yeah, I did that! Um, they get back... Yeah, bad pun. They get back to the lily pad, and she's like, I had such a fun time tonight, but the last bullfrog I went out with just wanted sex. I think we should take it slow. Fuck it. Really? <laughs> that doesn't happen! No, it's guy frog, girl frog, knock knock, we're about to fuck. That's how it ends. There's no intermediacy, no! It's just pure sex. I think that's kind of how it should be, though. I don't think there should be too much pressure on guys. But there's a difference between animals and humans. A big difference. Um, you know, it, we've gotten to the point where I think we're, humans are a little soft, you know? But it's not our fault. No, it's, it's our parents' fault. Because they worry about, like, our emotional damage. You know, a mom will take her, her child to the doctor be like, Excuse me, Mr. Doctor, psych psychologist, man, can you please help me? I'm sh I'm, my son, I'm really, I, I think he's been emotionally scarred for the rest of his life, and I'm really worried it's my fault. Fuck, yeah, it's your fault. I'd be messed up, too, if every time a kid took a grape from me at lunch, you thought it was necessary to take me to a guy and talk about how it made me feel. That's not okay. Like, they, I just, I can't believe that, like, parents would actually believe that having their kid talk to a psychologist makes them better. If you're born an antelope, within 10 minutes you can be a tiger shit. Okay? <laughs> like, if for somehow an antelope's, you know, getting chased by a predator and somehow lives, that mom isn't worried about the emotional damage. She's pissed. Like, let's go! I'm fucking hungry! We have to go hunt! And that child isn't, you know, that antelope isn't emotionally scarred. Not at all. It learned not to fuck with that predator. It learned its lesson. Oh my god. Uh, um, uh, what do I have? Oh yeah. Oh, let's see how this goes. Um, I really want to make a movie, like a horror film. Um, like a serial killer horror film. But like, I think it would be kind of funny to have like the serial killer be like, flamboyantly gay, and never mention it, the whole movie, no premise or anything, guy wakes up, he's tied up, all sweaty, he's confused, he's bruised, bleeding, shirtless, of course, guy busts in, hello, you have been a bad boy, such a bad boy, it's time to die.
<laughs> but people are like, Steve, no, like that doesn't work. Serial killers, they don't usually talk in movies. How are we gonna know he's gay? Okay, yeah, you guys are waiting. <laughs> the, uh, the way to do it, every good horror film has a chase scene. Yeah, through the woods, you know, running and it's all misty. He's like, no, sir, no, tripping over everything. The murderer's behind him. <laughs> like, the knockout? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, death by stabbing. Stabbing, I'm stabbing you, and I'm stabbing, stabbing away. <laughs> and the movie ends with a show tune about stabbing. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I was a cheerleader, I do jokes about gay guys, but I'm not gay, um, in fact, I took a girl home the other week, yeah, from a frat party, cause I'm classy, and you know, we were kind of drunk, we were getting into it, things were getting hot and heavy, and uh, you know, I was uh, doing my little DJ work, cause I'm classy, Again, I'm a gentleman, ladies first. So I'm down there, I'm scratching some records, all right? And I feel something that's not supposed to be there. And the only way I can describe this is like a weird tube or wire. I don't know what it was. I was drunk and I was about to get laid. So I'm not about to stop and be like, hey, like, what's this in your vagina? Can we, can we pause and talk about this? So, so we went to it. It was great. I'm a stallion and a story. And, um, I wake up the next morning and I'm thinking, I'm like, what the? What was that thing? And I got really excited because I was like, did I just fuck a cyborg? Like, my dream has come true 19 years and it's finally happened. Thank you. But before I was high fiving and tweeting away, I had to get to the bottom of it. So I was, I was like, I gotta talk to her, I don't have a choice. Now guys, there's no easy way to talk to a girl about her own vagina. None, none whatsoever. So I figured, I'm just gonna jump into it. So I was like, yeah, I had a lot of fun. What the fuck was that thing in your pussy? Can you talk about that? And she was like, it's a Nova ring. One of those like birth control things? Yeah. So I was like, but at any moment, I could have ripped it out and been like, ah, you're pregnant! <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay, we would have gotten an abortion. Okay. <laughs> I hope no one was offended by that. Because it's okay for me to like jack off, but I can't abort a baby, you know? But like, you know, because sperm are smarter than babies. Like, at least sperm can swim. Throw a baby into a pool, nothing. But I'll give babies some credit. You know, they will find the bottom of the pool faster than the sperm will find the egg. Right? Yeah. Oh, an abortion joke, dead baby joke, and rape joke? Yeah, I did it. But we're going to slow it down a little bit and do a joke about something a little more humble. A man recently committed suicide on the uh, Harvard Yard. And I wish that was as weird as it got, but it's not. He wrote a 1,900 page suicide note. 1,900 pages. What kind of trip to Kinko's was that? Like, yeah, I just finished my sitting novel. It's a real tearjerker. Like, he took five years writing it. Five years? That means not one good thing happened to him that made him change his mind that whole time. Did none of his friends notice that something might have been wrong? Like, hey, Tom, yeah, you know something wrong with Larry lately? Not within the last, like, four and a half years, I'd say. <laughs> and the kicker is that he sent it to all his friends and family. If my buddy just killed himself, I would be destroyed. I would be sobbing my eyes out. I wouldn't leave the house for weeks. But then if he sent me a 1,900-page suicide note, I'd be like, God damn it! I have to read this! You're a dick in the afterlife! How did you do that? Um, 
I, uh, I don't like cursive. That pisses me off. We went to school for like, we learned cursive for like four years. Just so I could learn how to write my name when I buy gas. <laughs> and like, like, I swear, like, the only thing I really know how to write is my name in cursive. So if I ever like need to borrow someone's notes or something and they, and they wrote in cursive, like I'm screwed because the only thing I know how to spell is my name, which is Steve Sheehan. So the only words I could spell would be she, shat, haste, at, vans. So unless I'm learning about women who are quickly pooping on Honda Odysseys, I don't really have a chance of passing this class. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. My name is Steve Sheehan.